Yes, this is ska. Original and indigenous. The music of guitar, saxophone, trumpet, bass, and drum. Now, this is perhaps the most energetic of all the basic ska steps. Ska is as easy as that. How about us joining a regular ska session? Originating in Jamaica, ska has evolved drastically in the underground of Los Angeles. The music is characterized by its fast tempos, blazing horns, and most importantly, the punk and metal influences that put the core in ska core. It started in the 1960s at some point, and it evolved into different forms, and I think my band, Ravancha, it basically is very diverse. We have different nationalities. It's more Spanish-based. It's more for the Latin communities, because that's where ska is now, in America. And I'd rather listen to that stuff than the sublime type of white boy type of ska shit. Popular bands in Los Angeles include South Central Skankers, La Resistencia, and Ocho Calacas. Skakore has been present in the Los Angeles area for more than a decade, where shows are held every weekend, often in someone's backyard. These bands are big, like you have a horn section, and then you have a rhythm section, you have your core, like guitar, drum, singer, bass, but then you have all these auxiliary instruments that are around it, like saxophones and, um, you know, your horn section, and uh, yeah, just everyone within the band was really just completely different. Everyone had really completely different backgrounds. It kind of welcomed me with open arms. I was like, okay, you can try everything you want to do in this context. If you love metal, that's okay. You can incorporate that into the music. It's just very, um, just like a stew of things, you know, if you, all these different genres that are kind of meshed together and uh, it really allows you to experiment. Skakor bands not only love performing their music, but also love the adoration they get from their fans. I, I think it's fucking great, man. You know, it, it totally helped me out, helped a lot of people out. There isn't a better feeling than leaving a show with a thousand handshakes, you know, and you know you're doing something right. The most memorable moment for me was the day that uh, we played at a show. I was singing, and there was like these little girls that were right there, like right in front of me, and they were just like singing along with me, and, and they were dancing, and they were just like, paying attention to me, to everything I was doing, they would try doing it. It was, it was a really, really nice moment because they look up, you know, they look up to people who sing. Of course, there are perceived stereotypes about the ska core subculture and the people that attend the shows. Yeah, the ska scene had different types of, uh, it was a, like a vast cast of characters. You know, you have the newbies, of course, but everyone that shows up for the first time, they're just like wide-eyed and it's like, wow, like this, this, exa this actually exists. And a lot of times I don't know it exists and it's there like two blocks from where they live because, you know, these parties take place behind people's houses and like their backyards and stuff. Then you get the other guys, uh, the real tough guys that show up and try to see, like, you know, they're big and they feel like they can just boss everybody around, you know, they're just like, I don't take shit from anyone. And you know, there's the guys, the wall huggers, you know, they just kind of bob their head and just smoke weed the entire time. There's of course the cholos that are completely out of place and they just try to sell Nas in the back. <laughs> Some ska core shows can get pretty rough. Participants have to enter at their own risk. I've fallen on glass or dislocated my elbow before. I've also gotten punched right on my chest um, and a bunch of other things, but that doesn't, still, that doesn't stop me. I still go in and it's fun. So one time at a show, I saw a girl get in the pit. She was in a wheelchair and I was like, oh, no fucking way. She's in a fucking wheelchair in the pit. When we have backyard shows, backyard shows are like uh, shows that just any random person throws, no security, no type of uh, regulation or anything like that. Sometimes it is very dangerous, so I do have to be careful when I'm out there. I used to love getting in the pit, you know, and we were in the pit and 
I don't know if you know this, but like when you're in the pit sometimes, uh, people don't like the way you push, you know, and uh, um, problems arise while you're in these pits, right? Even though ska core bands can have successful shows in people's backyards, playing in the band doesn't necessarily pay the bills. Since most bands perform for free, many band members have to rely on other jobs besides the band to make a living. I do overall construction, you know, uh, you know, just a hardworking man representing working class. What do I do? I mean, I do a lot of different things. I do pinup modeling. I enter competitions. I do a lot of uh, scene competitions. Uh, I do a lot of auditions for like um, acting. Uh, always trying to get parts. Always trying to do something uh, out of the ordinary. I got a small boxing gig I do. It's just mostly like, help out as much kids as I can. I rarely see my family, maybe a couple of hours a day. And then I see the, the band the weekends, only once a week. When I work, I try to do less work and more variety. Well, I'm a laborer. I, uh, I move heavy things around for a corporation that's a really piece of shit corporation. And as a lot of jobs in this country, you're at their mercy. So I, luckily I'm lazy, so I only work part time. So I pick up box, heavy boxes and I throw them around. For many, underground ska is here to stay. It's a unique experience and a valuable form of expression that inspires its musicians and fans alike. This is where I'm at, this is where I feel I should be at and this is where I'm gonna be at for the remainder of my years.